So I'm, I'm going to summarise the yeah. subject I'm going to talk about is, is classification and censorship on the internet. Um, but there's a bit of confusion about what those, those terms mean. So it's, a, it's yeah. important to spend a little bit of time defining yeah, it. Speak it. So yeah. I'll talk about the proposal and some ways you can approach it when you're talking to MPs. But, but first, the problem I need to deal with is that Australian debates about censorship will inevitably run into confusion about what, what the language we use means. And sometimes we fall into those traps ourselves. Like we talk about the government's proposal as being filtering and import this, this frame of reference about how filtering removes impurities, so it must be good. Like the government has been, has been very deliberate in the use of that term. And every time we use it, we reinforce in our listeners' minds what filtering means. So, so we need to be careful about, about what words we need and, and understand what they actually mean. We like to think that we live in a free country where the government stays out of our way, but some of these concepts can be a bit jarring when they meet with reality. And some of our opponents make things worse by deliberately muddying the waters by, by misdefining the words that they're using. So let's delve into that a bit. We'll start with talking about classification. The ostensible purpose of classification is to provide information about some item of content to people who haven't viewed it. In a way, it's a little bit like biological classification. We can potentially find out what's inside a frog by dissecting it and break it down into its component parts. But that's probably a waste of a perfectly good frog, given that someone else has already gone to the trouble of doing it for us, and they've already learned what all the component parts are and documented it for us. So we can just go to their documentation. We know that a frog is an amphibian. Classification automatically tells us certain things about how all the bits fit together and how it works as a whole organism. Our classification board in Australia follows a similar chain of reasoning when they look at a movie or a book or anything else that they're classifying. They have a crack team of specially trained film viewers who will watch the movie so that you don't have to. And when they're finished watching it, they assess it against some kind of standard and deliver a judgment about what kind of classification it falls into. The classifiers will follow some sort of nominally objective set of standards, so that like in the case of the frog, someone who hasn't seen the movie will have some sort of realistic expectation about what's inside the film, even though they haven't pulled it apart themselves. An important thing to bear in mind here is that classification effectively adds information to the classified article. You, you take a raw item and then you add some input from the classifiers and you end up with exactly the same item but with a piece of metadata attached which gives you some information about the film. Make sense? I don't think anyone has any serious problem with this stuff. This is one of the two roles that the classification board has. A little observed side effect of these systems is that you can actually have more than one ratings agency. You could give exactly the same article to a different agency and they can use their own different standards and apply a different rating. But importantly, none of this labelling has changed the original article. You can have as many labelling agencies as you like and underneath it all, the original item is still there. So in the same way that a library book remains the same regardless of what's written in its catalogue entry, or a frog remains a frog even if we give it a new name in Latin, a classified article theoretically remains the same no matter how many labels have been applied to it. Now, in Australia we have one classification system that's administered by the classification board. Actually, no. <laughs> um, we have a great many classification systems. Um, commercial television has one, which is completely different from the classification board system. There's, there's no correlation whatsoever. So when you see a movie on television, the rating that comes up in your TV guide isn't one that has been issued by the classification board. Um, for what it's worth, the TV stations all employ their own classifiers. They all make their own independent judgments about what's in the film based on uh, a, uh, an industry code that they've registered with ACMA. I believe SBS have their own particular system as well. Non-commercial TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, when the, uh, when the oh, I think it was the previous Labor government wrote these rules, they literally forgot to include non-commercial broadcasters. 
But they said that the broadcasting industry had to come up with codes of practice registered under the Broadcasting Services Act. But the ABC isn't part of an industry, and neither is SBS, so they have their own as well. Uh, they're available on their websites. Um, the airlines get a go too, because they need to cut their own films so that they're suitable for, for anyone of any age who happens to be on the plane watching. You, you, wouldn't, want, uh, you wouldn't want little Johnny seeing uh, whatever the latest uh, slash film is. Um, then, of course, there's downloadable content. Um, you know, if you, if you go and download, say, a computer game from the iTunes store to, to run it on your iPhone, that hasn't been classified by the classification board. It's been classified by Apple, and they put a series of labels on it saying what's likely to be in the computer game. So there are different classification systems all for content that's available in Australia. And there's the pesky issue of the content that hasn't been sourced from Australia at all, legally or otherwise, and is therefore completely untouched by Australian regulators. Australian viewers who consume this content clearly don't care about its lack of blessing from an Australian regulator. I've never heard of anyone downloading a movie on BitTorrent and saying, oh, hang on, this is an American edit. It hasn't been examined by the classification board, so I can't watch it. <laughs> idiotic thing to say. So Australian consumers, by and large, I don't think they mind whether or not an item of content has an Australian rating on it. If you go a little bit wider than that and say, if you're a parent of a very, very young child, by and large, you couldn't care less about its rating. You, you don't care if the movie's been rated R rating plus, because it's not on the menu of possibilities that you're going to make available to your child. The only things that you would make available to a young child are things that are clearly and unambiguously designed for young children. <coughs> Similarly, if you're a parent of a 17-year-old who is legally a child, you also probably aren't going to care about what the classification board thinks of anything because you know that you've got absolutely no control whatsoever over what your 17-year-old watches. <laughs> probably nor should you. So I, I would contend that the only people who honestly care about what the classification board thinks about anything at all are parents of kids in a window probably between about nine years old and about 14 or 15 when parents start to lose control. So it's a very small window in our 80 year lifetimes when we get the benefit of what the Australian classifiers happen to think. And outside of that window, nobody cares. So it's fair to say that there are a, multi a multiplicity of classifications in Australia, which is something to keep at the forefront of our minds when people say that the internet should be regulated like offline media. Which offline media? There's, there's lots of them. Each has their own classification system. Each has their own incompatible set of ratings. Different countries have different things. So, so what exactly do people mean when they say that the internet should be treated like the offline world? So what does our classification board regulate? Well, we have a classification, Publications, Films and Computer Games Act 1995. We also have schedules five and seven of the Broadcasting Services Act 1992, which defines the internet as a film and brings internet content under the scheme. Under the Classification Act, there's a definition of a thing called a submittable item and these are assessed by the board, which divides publications into unrestricted, category one restricted, and category two restricted ratings. Uh, films into the normal set of ratings that we all know and love, and computer games into a somewhat more restricted set of ratings. Anything that falls outside these guidelines is refused classification. And this is important. Our, our erstwhile communications minister likes everybody to believe that refused classification is the same as child pornography. That's a little bit like saying the, the, the ministers are complete absolute liars about everything that comes out of their mouth. Sometimes that could be true for some ministers, but you can't make a blanket statement about all of them. You can't say that just because something is refused classification, there's something illegal about it. In fact, the vast bulk of refused classification articles aren't illegal at all. 